style of leadership, right? Some of these guys here, they run the business, so they're the CEO. They're the owner of the company, and they have a right-hand person, right? So let's just say the CEO is Kraft. He's dealing with the coach, and then the coach has the best salesperson or the best engineer. These are different dynamics with relationships. What was your style of leadership? Meaning, leadership, we talked about it earlier today, is one, hey, you lead by example, right? But that's not enough. Sometimes you lead by example and you're quiet. You're like, you don't say anything. Well, you got to do more than just lead by example. Yeah. You got to get other people to do things they typically wouldn't do on their own. What, what style of leader were you? Yeah. So if I'm a guy that I'm like, hey, man, I don't want to play anymore. I got two more years. I want to get my check. I want to go. I want to go to a different team, get my big contract, and I'm done. How are you talking to me there? How are you enrolling me? into me giving my best? Are you asking questions? Are you kicking my ass? Are you taking me out to dinner? Are you telling me, come over to the house? What was obviously from the people that we've spoken, anybody we've talked that's been a temp teammate, Tom, we, I've interviewed a lot of people that are athletes. I don't know how many guys that were the GOATs, their teammates, freaking everybody loved them. Dude, people love you. Like teammates loved running with you. You played three different careers. You didn't have one career you, you were one of those guys that had three careers there you played. Yeah. But what was your style where you kicked their ass, you challenged them, yet you believed in them? What was the method you, dri you drive in your guys? Yeah, so a lot of it, it's, it's a great question. I think that, and, and this is another probably very, very important thing in my mind, is in terms of leadership is, is how you relate to the people that you work with. And my vision of a relationship comes down to one word, caring. Do you care about the other person and do you collectively care about what you're trying to achieve? The only way people are gonna feel that they can trust you is if you care about them. So if you just see them as a transactional relationship, oh, you're just here for this time being, or well, that's all they're gonna give you. But I felt like I need to connect. Especially as I got older, I got to connect with the young players. I need a relationship. I need the ability to relate to them. They need to trust me. I need to trust them. We need to be vulnerable to one another. I need to care for them. So before I could yell at them, which believe me, I yelled at a lot of people. The relationships I had with my teammates, I had, I played with guys from all over the country. Every background, you know, every college, and man, I, would, I got to be just me. Like, you know, people, you, you would think, oh, man, you're, you're, you're treated a certain way, which, yeah, when you outside of a building, people know you, they see you on TV, they treat you a certain way. When you're in the building, man, you're just another guy. You're like, you know, my, my son went to camp for three weeks, sleepaway camp, and there's no electronics, and this is up in Maine this year. There's no electronics. They sleep in like a you know, like this log cabin, you know, they swim in the lake every morning, they eat in the cafeteria, and I drive away last year, and I'm like, we, need, we all need more of that. And then about five minutes later, I was like, well, I do live that life. I'm still a football player. You know, we're all in this building where we're eating in a cafeteria, we're getting MF'd by our coach, you know, we're, we're showering in the same spot, you know, everyone's, it's an all community you know, so this ability to have this relationship with so many people has is, is, is been a great part of my life. And I think my ability to relate to them, care about them, they felt like, well, if Tom, why, why should Tom care about me? And I'm like, dude, because you're my teammate. Oh, I know, Tom, but you've already won six Super Bowls. I'm like, I don't give a Like, we have this year. This is the year, my first year in Tampa. I don't care what I did. Like, that's I look at those things one day and I'm like, oh, that's great. Someone's going to say it. But this is the moment right now. Let's get, let's get to work. Let's, you know, let's get to know who you are. Let's get to know you. Let's make the most out of your career. Like my career is great. Like, but I want the best for your career too. And if it's going to be your, your best career, you need me to be good. And I need you to be good. So let's work together. Because every year those things change. Was it, was it, uh, um you know how uh, 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 you get a person that comes in and you sell them on the culture. Here's what we're all about. So a leader, I'm going to sell you. Here's why we do this. Here's why you accept high standards. Here's why you get up and do your, here's why you watch the tape. Here's why you take care of your health. Here's why you get, because if we do this at the end of the season, we got a chance at winning a championship and being the best, okay? Or is it more the pure pressure of the culture, you either fit the culture or you're not going to want to be around this culture so you filter yourself out. 
Which was yeah. more, the, the model ad, specifically more under Belichick and yourself in New England, was it more selling the culture to the player or was it more, no, man, this is our culture. Either adjust or, I'm sorry, it's not going to work out. I, I think it's a great question, and it's like it's, it's hard to develop culture, right? Because that's a word that's thrown around a lot. And I think that has to do with, like, values of the company. But in the end, what does culture mean to me? Do we care about each other, and do we care about what we're trying to accomplish? Most people just care about themselves. And you just care about your own personal situation. My coworker, what the mission is, what the... Not, the owner usually doesn't think like that because this is his business. But the more you give people the opportunity to have ownership of that culture, the better. And I was in the, I, I look at some great cultures over the years, like, you know, it, sports are kind of easy, you know, somewhat easy. Sure. But even like the culture of like, you know, and the, the, arm, the, the armed forces, our military, you know, like you look, show up to the Naval Academy, like, man, that's a culture. Like, and people are accountable to that. They show up every day, they show up on time, they respect each other. Everyone's probably got different tenets that they believe in, but the fundamental belief is I'm giving myself to something greater than myself. I'm giving myself something greater than me as an individual because it's gonna pay off in ways that nothing in life can be accomplished in a big way without teamwork. Teamwork is what it's all about. You show up every day, you play your role, you do your best, and then you communicate about it. And then you have people that hold you accountable to the results. And if the results aren't good enough, then you re-strategize or you get rid of some people and you move on. So I think what we, what we are fortunate enough to develop over an early period of time in New England was a culture of a lot of teammates that may not have been the best like myself, but we cared a lot. We worked really hard. We were really coachable and we won. And then some other players were like, dude, I'll, that's what I want. I want to win. They joined our program. So then we had, which is really important, you need people that drive the culture because it just can't be you. Because when you turn your back to focus on what you got to yeah. do, you need other people driving the culture too. And we developed a culture of culture drivers. Willie McGinnis, Teddy Bruschi, Mike Vrabel, Troy Brown. Wes Welker, Kevin Falk, Matt Light, all these guys that they just, light. it was inherent to what the team ultimately ended up becoming. We all drove the culture and then no one was going to fuck it up. So you got some people that came in from other places and man, they might've had maybe some, a, a certain reputation and they realized that when they got in that locker room, I can't make bad decisions here. There's no room for bad decisions in this place. Now, not that we were all like angels or nothing, we weren't, but we weren't destructive to what the culture was. And those guys who were, they didn't last long. And they realized pretty quickly they didn't fit in and they moved on somewhere else. And my view was always like, man, if, if you're about yourself, you may be amazing. I would love to compete against you. <laughs> Go play for the other team. Because when you're around a bunch of selfish people, and I've that. been around those, yep. you know, guys that... The, you win the game and they're pissed off because they didn't get the ball as much as they wanted. And you're like, there's one ball. I'm trying my best. I'm trying to do what's best for the team. Like, yeah. I, 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 there's a lot of other good players here. Some days it's going to be your week. Other days it's not. But what are we in this for? We in here to pad your statistics, whether that's because we all get accolades for those and we have you know, people that want to see us succeed. But in yep. my view, the team's success was always most important. And I think the great reward in my life is not the record that you would read off before I came on stage. What you said was your teammates loved you. That's the greatest reward I could ever have. Yeah, it's, it, I'm telling you, when we had the guys there at, please, when we had the guys there at Foxborough, and for me, sometimes, if you want to learn about me, ask the people that work with me. You're going to learn more. If I want to learn about you, of course, I can do an interview with you, and you'll give the answers you'll give, and you're maybe not wanting to offend anybody, so you kind of now at a different phase of your life. But if I talk to your teammates, they're going to be like, no, oh, man, listen, here's how it was. Here's this. Everybody talked very highly of you. But let's, let's stay on this. So driver for you, what drove you more? Because you just said something. If you're selfish, hey, man, congratulations on you being great. I cannot wait to compete against you, right? Straight up to your face. Okay. What drove you more? Did 
words of what other people said about you in the paper, media drive you, kind of like Ted Williams was driven by that, did, hey, Tom Brady is done, you know, Max Kellerman, every freaking season, now he's done, he's done, he's done. Is it more Peyton Manning's the better quarterback between the two? And it's just going to like, you know, Joe Montana just yesterday said, well, the greatest quarterback of all time is Dan Marino. We all know that. It's not me. It's not Joe. It's Tom. Okay. Did that drive you? You know, is it more... You know, the people who left you, they're like, hey, man, I mean, it's great. It's been a great run, but I'm going to go play with XYZ team. I'm going to go play with XYZ. You think that guy's a better teammate to go? Or is it people from other sports that they're like, hey, man, the greatest of all time, the GOAT. I mean, listen, they, everybody says he's the MJ. He's the Jordan of this. He's the Jordan of this. And why do they say he's the Jordan? Why don't they say he's the Brady of this? He's the Brady. I want to change. And I don't know if you're going to be, you know, fully comfortable to serve because some of these guys are your relationship, your friends. Which one drove you the most behind closed doors? The, the, I, I think that the point is, is like the attachment of someone else's thoughts about me didn't, they did 1%. And here I was, I was a little bit older, but I was still pretty decent as a player. And uh, I was like, all right, free agency's coming. And I called my agent and I was like, all right, what's the deal? Like, what are we thinking? He went off a list of teams, right? And there was probably like seven or eight teams. And in my mind, I'm like, seven or eight teams? Like, there should be like 20 teams. Like, there, you're telling me there's like that many better quarterbacks than me? Or, and obviously, the situations fit certain ways. But it came down to like there was a couple teams that like you can be motivated so it's by more than one percent. But, but I'm saying you could be motivated by a newspaper article sure. or a talk show debate or by people saying Peyton Manning. I got better. you. Like, got but you. at the end of the day, I don't think that motivates you every day. I just don't. I don't think you wake up every day right. super motivated to go read the newspaper. I think you wake up every day and hopefully you can look at yourself and say, "Did I give it my best?" Was that my best? Did I give it everything I could? Did the people around me get as much as I could? And if the answer is no, that's okay. Like, that's okay. Like, but just at least you know it. But don't think that, like, you know, that you're going to have a lot of success if you, all you do is care about yourself. You don't work that hard. No one's that accountable. Look, I, I, I was on a team that was last year in Tampa. It was tough. When I see a defense sack the quarterback, and every D line then runs up to the guy who sacks the quarterback and they do a group celebration. I go, oh, shit, I don't want to play against we go. these guys. Yep. But then I see one guy sack the quarterback and he's got his ninth celebration and, you know, and none of his teammates celebrate with him. I'm like, well, he's in it for himself. You know, that's not going to be, that's not going to go well over a period of time. So these are just things you guys can see now, you know, with just a little awareness. Like, who are the dangerous companies? Who are the dangerous you know, teams and competition that you guys are facing. When you guys succeed, is it all about that person? Is it about the team's success? I always felt like the quarterback's job is when it doesn't go well, you take the blame. When it goes well, you give the credit. That's what great leaders do.